stand. I am so sorry to keep you waiting, Yuri. Barshak to uh, to blame for this. Good job. Uh, let me just get this nuclear meltdown chili. I can smell it from here. Ah. Oh. I'm scared for you. I'm scared for me too. Let's um. Let me just sh shake off the little extra bits. Oh, nice. All right, all right, all right. So Yuri, tell us a little about yourself. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, well, my name is Yuri Martos. Um, I am actually a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed in 2014 at the age of 34 and uh, was able to do, I had to go through chemo and radiation. And um, um, my mother's also a breast cancer survivor. And so she's something that I'm very passionate about. So now I'm here with ACS Can, and I am the state lead ambassador for the Hawaii Pacific team. So that includes all of the state of Hawaii, but also Guam as well. Thank you. I want to say that mm -hmm. your survivor story is inspirational, first off. Thank you. But also that <clears throat> it was great that you sought early intervention for your breast cancer. If I recall, it was caught stage one or stage two, correct? Yes. Actually, um, so I was lucky enough to be in a breast cancer and early detection kind of a um, program that we had here on Kauai. And um, because my mom had breast, and I was, because my mom had breast cancer, so I was at higher risk. So I actually had my first mammogram um, at age uh, thirty-three. Yeah, so earlier than what normally normally you would do it at thirty-five. So thirty-four is when they uh, no thirty-three, and then the next year that my very my very next mammogram that I ever had was the one that found the cancer. So um, I was very, very early on. So that's why I'm a huge advocate also for early detection mammograms and colonoscopies and all that. That makes a lot of sense. And it's also a very sensible response to what I'd wager is a an achievement of prior advocacy. Yeah, you can say that. Advocating for yourself, that's super important. Yep. But also the um, the advocacy that led to that early intervention program for relatives of mm -hmm. survivors, um, and right. that's the sort of thing that like you've been a beneficiary of a program that may well have saved your life, and it's very inspiring Absolutely. that you've taken that personal success, that that self advocacy, and you've returned it outwards to the world. So thank you for that. Well, yeah, I'm. Um I'm blessed and lucky to be here because of these types of programs, and that's why I feel like it's my my job to give back to others who, you know, can, maybe can also benefit from this same type of work and advocacy that we that we are doing with ACS Can. Fair. Um. So, <clears throat> oh, sorry. One second. No, you're um, good. So, what is what is your position within ACS CAN? Like, I, you said you're your state lead ambassador, but what does a state lead ambassador do? So basically, my position as state lead ambassador is to um, we're kind of I'm kind of in um, in charge of rallying most of our uh, volunteers. So, um, like we heard from Chelsea earlier, she's our um, ambassador constituent team lead for Congressional District One. And every state has two um, or act leads for each congressional district that they have. Um, but every state only has one state lead ambassador. So um, my job's pretty easy because we only have two congressional districts here in Hawaii. But like a place like California, which has, you know, 
I don't know, 100 congressional districts or more, um, you know, their job is a little harder. But really what we do is um, the state lead ambassadors in charge of rallying the volunteers. Um, we work very closely with our grassroots manager, which is Davin and Corey, who's our uh, government um, liaison, and he helps us um, with writing policy and things like that. We work closely with them. And all of our volunteers, like I said, we help organize things like our Cancer Awareness Day that we had that you attended last month. And then we also, um, the state lead ambassador, in addition to the two ACT leads that we have in Hawaii, we go to Washington, D.C. every year. And we actually have a, a huge um, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network um, leadership lobby and summit uh, a day that's literally on the hill so we actually get to go to the capitol we get to speak to our um state representatives there are senators and we get to lobby them for more money for cancer funding and things like that um on the hill which is which is a really great experience excellent um so you've been uh, a couple You've been a, a a member of ACS CAN for a couple of years. I know your um your uh, position of the state lead ambassador is relatively new. I was there when it was announced. Um, mm -hmm. But what are some um what are some of the recent achievements of ACS CAN that you've that you've been a part of? Sorry, you're gonna get a couple oh, of the well. same questions as um Davin. My idea was that um since you guys are spaced so far apart, you might be uh, speaking to different audiences about more or less the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, um, I would like to actually touch upon something that we were able to, uh, a bill that we were able to push through last year um, with the help of um, Chelsea and Davin and so many others. But um, we were able to get a legislation um, approved to um, essentially ban any kind of tobacco, smoke, even e-cigarettes on all of our University of Hawaii campuses. So that includes our major University of Hawaii campuses, which we have two, um, one in Hilo and one on Oahu. Um, and then um, and then all of the um, community colleges as well that are part of the University of Hawaii network. Mm -hmm. So um, that legislation, I, I just, I'm very proud of that because we pushed that through. We actually got a lot of students involved. And I think that was one of the biggest things was that the students were really the ones who were saying that they wanted to have um, this bill pushed forward and to get, you know, get tobacco off of their campuses. And so we were able to get that pushed through. So that was one of the biggest things I feel like um, it was really awesome that we were able to do. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's sort of impactful because uh, it's sort of a critical point. Um, that especially like the the rise of tobacco, the age of um, legality for tobacco to 21 here was like to sort of limit the access of uh, for high schoolers because a lot of the way that tobacco gets to high school students is through peers and through similar mm -hmm. age peers. Like the juniors get it from the seniors or the seniors get it from those right. first year college kids and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, and I think as we know, like growing up, you know, you it's it's a huge peer pressure activity you know smoking and stuff like that so we can just if we could just eliminate that they're not seeing it at all then we really can increase the chance of them not even becoming smokers and not getting addicted in the first place right agreed um so what is uh your what is acs can's current agenda for this year what are the uh, sort of bills and uh, agenda pieces that we're working on for this legislative session? I know we're sort yeah, of correct. nearing the end of the legislative session, but what, what's this year in review, yeah, basically? We, yeah, we are. Um, this year, um, two of the bigger ones that we were working on is, um, first, we have a liver cancer appropriations bill. And really, this what this bill was looking to do is to seek funding to... Um, uh, give additional funds to our uh, our University of Hawaii. We have a um, we have a, a center for disease control at the University of Hawaii um, at our Jabsom um, clinic there, and give them funding to actually look into liver cancer 
in Hawaii and why we have such a huge incident of liver cancer in Hawaii um, and kind of see if, you know, we can find some answers to that so that we can help prevent it um, in the future and try to get those numbers down for our state. Um, so that's one of the bills. And the other one, I know Davin talked a little bit about that one already, but the other one that is, um, that I, I'm really passionate about too is our palliative care program, which is something that we've been working on for a couple of years already. It's a partnership with um, Kokua Mao which, and the Department of Health um, to get more training for palliative care. Now palliative care is so important because it really takes care of the entire entire person. So when you're told, you know, you have cancer, um, you know, it's just something that you're never going to be prepared for and you don't even know exactly where to start thinking about things you know you have a family you have a job are you going to be able to work um are you going to be able to continue to provide for your family you know mentally it's, it's very straining and not just also physically straining on your body so palliative care is so important because it's really training our healthcare officials and um, those working closely with you to make sure that other things in your life are also being um, paying, paid attention to. So, um, you know, is your mental health okay? It's not just talking about treatment. Because treatment is only one part of, of your entire healing process. So are you spiritually okay? Do you need to meet with, you know, a pastor or someone to talk about that? Do you need to go to job counseling? Do you need to, you know, speak with some kind of a social worker to help you with family issues that you're having um, due to, you know, your cancer diagnosis? So palliative care is, was, is super inclusive and helps to heal the entire person and not just, just curing just the disease itself. And so that's why I feel like this pilot program is so important um, to get this training into more of our um more of our community so that we can feel our survivors better okay that's a very good that's a very comprehensive answer i don't really have any follow-ups for that um, <laughs> um so you've mentioned that you are a cancer survivor and that this is something mm -hmm. that is very personal to you um, but I haven't had cancer, so why should I, as a cancer-free individual, care about the American Cancer Society and their agenda? Well, I think, like Davin said, um, I have very have found very few people. Maybe I can count them on one hand who've told me they've never met anybody with cancer. They're not personally um, attached to anybody that has cancer. Um, I know you yourself have also um, had cancer incidences in your family, um, history of it. So if you think about it, everybody is going to be touched by cancer at some point in their life. But for me, you know, what really gets me excited about HCN and, um, you know, obviously it's personal, but what gets me excited is the fact that we can rally together and come together and use our voices to do something important for so many people like you know the impact of that tobacco free bill getting tobacco out of our um off of our uh campuses i mean we don't we we won't even really know the impact that that's going to have for so many years to come that it could have you know saved lives of students who you know, otherwise would have been hooked on smoking or hooked on e-cigarettes or whatever um so the impact of the work that we get to do is so great. And to me, that's what makes me excited. And um, even if you don't have a, a, a real close connection to cancer, it's still a great way to see kind of our democracy in, in action. You know, that's our middle name, right? Cancer Action Network. We're doing something greater for, um, for our community. And that's exciting. That's, yeah, very well put. Um, and, 
Yeah, I, I do have a personal connection to cancer. Both my grandmothers um, died before I was ever born. So I, I was not necessarily affected by their loss, but I was affected by having never known them in the first place, um, mm -hmm. which having known my grandfathers, one of them was a great man. Uh, I won't speak of the other one, but um, one of them was a very loving grandfather, and, you know, if his wife was anything like he was, then I missed out a lot. Mm -hmm. And my mother's had a couple run-ins with skin cancer, um, but she's also been very proactive about getting anything unusual or painful checked out, and she's... um. She's never had anything escalate past the first stage, um, which is very, mm -hmm. very fortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've shared with me that story, so thank you for sharing. Yes, of course. Um, why is advocacy important? Like, of course, when we have loved ones who are going through a very difficult time medically, it's important to be there for them. But why is mm -hmm. advocacy at large important? Oh, well, yeah. I think for a lot of things that I just said, right? Um, you know, I never thought about when I first started volunteering for ACS CAN, you know, um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, you know, lobbying and advocacy, you know, I don't want to be involved in politics and things like that. But um being able to see how you can help either a loved one or your community at large um, by just using your voice is, mm -hmm. I think, it's so awesome that we're able to that we're able to do that. That you know, our government is set up in this way where we can um, use our voices to do this. And and like you said, you know, being a, an advocate for yourself as well and for others is just it's really just speaking up. You just if you have questions, um, ask them. If you, you know, you, if you have an opinion, say it. You know, uh, it's just, it's just a way of expressing yourself. And you know, um, sometimes people don't have, aren't the best at public speaking. You know, so you can also participate in advocacy by, you know, written testimony or letters to the editor or letters to some of our. Um, chief legislators that um, that could help move legislation um, a along. You know, there's a lot of ways to use your voice that could really help. And I think it is important because it is like our, is seeing our democracy in, in action. And I think it's just an important part of being in the community and being a, a good community member. <laughs> Barshak, thanks for sharing. He just said, pancreatic cancer took my father at a relatively young age. I hope research squashes that form of cancer soon. It's such a silent and quick killer. Um, yes, thank I mean, you for sharing. Thank you, Barshak. I mean, that's why we're here. Um, I yes. don't know that cancer will ever be eradicated. Um, if I, like, just knowing what cancer is, is eventually, basically, cells reproduce themselves. It's sort of like a code that runs infinitely. Cells reproduce themselves constantly, and occasionally bad ones get through. And mm -hmm. uh, cancer is basically just a bad one that runs out of control. And eventually, like, if, if we manage to cure every other disease and old age ailment that ever should befall us, cancer will be the last boss that claims us all. Um, and which is why I think cancer is sort of becoming more of a frequent killer, because we are squashing a lot of the other preventable diseases. Um, but I know that there's a lot that we can do to intervene and to prevent cancers from uh, claiming someone's life early. And I think that's the big thing for me, is there's no reason that someone should die at 40 from a breast cancer. Maybe right. cancers become too difficult for the body to f effectively fight at 80, but we're talking about someone who's like 10 years out of college, who's might still be raising young kids or something like that dying of cancer mm -hmm. is inexcusable mm -hmm. and that's something that we can like through access to care and through comprehensive approaches to um, treatment uh, we can mitigate that risk 
and that's the important part for me. Like, I don't think we'll find a cure for a lot of cancers because it's just, it's one of those things that like ra radiation therapy uh, or chemotherapy might be the best that we ever get to do. But, and eventually your body just gets too old to fight that. But we can make it so that we always get to the late stage of life before that becomes an mm -hmm. issue. That's my mm -hmm. goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yuri, I want to say uh, thank you um, so much for your for your time. Um, you have I had a couple other questions that I asked Davin, but you managed to sort of answer them very comprehensively um, <laughs> with your other responses. So I don't okay. really have any other questions for you. If uh, chat has any other questions. Um, Yuri's less equipped to talk about the financials, I believe. Um, that's more Davin's wheelhouse. But if mm -hmm. you have any other questions about the legislative agenda or the um, the mission of ACS CAN or uh, Yuri's involvement in that mission, uh, please, now's mm -hmm. a good time to speak up. I think I've earned my drink. I'm going to wash <laughs> the rest of this nuclear meltdown down. So this interview I'm, is brought I'm... to you by Kirkland Signature Organic. I'm so proud of you for <laughs> lasting that long. Mm. What are you drinking? This is um, Kirkland Signature Organic Chocolate Banana Almond Non-Dairy Beverage. It is like my staple drink. I get two of these a day, basically, and I love them so much. And yeah. right now they taste so good, and the fat just washes away. Because like the, the almond <laughs> fat like just washes away all of the spice. Barshak asks, is there a headquarters on Kauai? Uh, there isn't a headquarters on Kauai. Um, our main ACS CAN um, office is um, housed within our American Cancer Society um, office that's located on Oahu, and that's where our two staff members also um, reside and work out of. Um, but we do, uh, I'm here on Kauai. I'm happy to meet with anybody who has questions. Um, I'm trying to be more, um, getting our volunteers more involved, um, in things. Um, what, one of the things that we do is, um, we table, we have a table at the Relay for Life mm -hmm. event, which there are two of on Kauai and, um, a few around the state. Yep. And, um, if you want to come out and learn more, you can come out there and talk story with us. Um, you can also become a member. It's ten dollars for the year. You can join ACS Can and um, be a member and come out with us. Maybe you know to like our cancer awareness day. That's so great because we like uh, like Colton said earlier. You know we get to talk with our legislators, sit down with them, um, and tell them why this 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 is so important to us. And so um, that's another way you can get involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we don't have a, a headquarters here, but we do have occasional meetings. Um, so mm -hmm. we welcome anyone who wishes to join to come to those as well. Uh, you can get a hold of me and I'll, um, I'll forward you on to Yuri or to Davin and they'll yeah. be able to help you out as well. Um, we just had last week uh, the Relay for Life in Hanapepe. So uh, the next mm -hmm. one isn't going to be until the summer, fall? I think it's August or... Yeah, it's uh, yeah, late it's summer. It's in the fall, fall and it'll be in Kapa'a. Look, yeah, the Kapa'a relay, um, which I'm definitely mm -hmm. there for. I missed out on um, the Hanapepe relay because of other um, obligations, but I'll definitely make no it worries. to the... And I made it to both of them last year, so it kind of feels bad that I missed this one, but... Oh, we'll make no it. No worries. We had, yeah, we had a great turnout um, of volunteers. So, okay, it's August 10th is when I have them. August 10th. August, I will tr um, try to make it to that. I had to mark my yeah. calendar. There might be another event that's happening, but I'll probably just skip it if it's directly conflicting. So, Daglo Red said something personal to add. Both my grandfathers died of cancer. Both were lifelong smokers. My dad's father's body was riddled with it. My mom's father was basically healthy until suddenly he found out he had oat cell cancer, which took him out two weeks later. His peace of mind at the end was inspiring. I was young. I miss them both still. Hmm. I'm really sorry to hear that, man. 
I yeah. I haven't seen a loved one die from cancer, but my grandmother was buried the day I was born. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, she died on my like right around my grandfather's birthday, which is a week before mine, and they had the funeral service a week before. My mother wasn't able to make it because she was delivering me. So I I haven't personally been there for it, but it has affected my family in a similar way. I know she wanted to be there to see me as well, and she never got that opportunity, so mm. it's definitely... Um, I know. Yeah. It's really hard, and that's why we do the work we do, you know. Like, I lost an uncle to uh, leukemia like five years ago, and he left behind his wife and four kids as well, and it's been really hard for her. And then his wife um, also got breast cancer about two or three years later, and so... Um, when I think about my cousins that have been left behind who have already lost his father to cancer, to see their mother go through it, I can't even just imagine how scared they feel about that, you know, to think that, you know, they could possibly lose their mom also. And so it's just a fear that we live in almost daily, especially if you have, if you come from a family that, um, a history that has a history of cancer. And, you know, really, that's why we're here. We want to make sure that we can inform people about it, tell them about, you know, getting their checkups, you know, early or on time and um, eating healthy, being living a healthy lifestyle, you know, um, all those all those things that we could do to try and prevent cancer. And that's why we do what we do so that nobody has to hear those words or have to see their loved one die from cancer. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this. This is really awesome. I'm, um, whenever you're ready, I'm ready to request my song. <laughs> sure. I just want to say one quick thing. I am floored yeah. by the amount of love and support that everyone here has brought. So that total, that $412.55 isn't even close. So one of the things that, um, I had to manually add bits and I haven't added bits for this entire stream. So I just want to mm -hmm. add really quickly what we're actually at. So we have had, in addition to that $412.55 today, we had, hold on. I had to do a little, a little bit of quick math. 1,111, 5,000. Okay, I'm going to go the other way. Um, 2,000, 2,100, 26, 36, 46, 49, 20, 69, 20. 10,920. Uh, I gotta add, I gotta use a calculator for this last one. <laughs> 10, 9, 20 plus. So we actually, in addition to that total there, have another $120.32. So, chat, you've awesome. raised $532.88. So far, and that's before my contribution that is added. So, that is amazing. Yes. Oh my so thank this you, is, everyone. This has been fantastic, and I love every last one of you, and I'm so proud of you and everything that you are doing and will continue to do, I hope. Um, yes, let's, absolutely. Let's make this happen, man. Um, absolutely. So there's one more message that I want to read. Um, this one's from my wife. Um, she said, there's a girl in my elementary school, a few younger than, a few years younger than me, who went through leukemia, and all of us got to know a bit about that through seeing her get frail and lose her hair and dis disappear entirely for a few months. When she came back, we all threw a party. Of course, the kids cared about more, more about the ice cream, but the adults were crying and getting older. Now I get why. So, yeah, I mean, that's another, you know, sometimes, like, I, I think of cancer as something that mostly affects old people. Um, it's, you know a a um i mean it's it's cells replicating and then eventually the bad ones add up but like leukemia i mean is an entirely different beast but it's also something that we fight when we fight for cancer treatment and comprehensive care so yes thank you so much because that that is another thing that we are fighting to prevent all right yuri do you have your request you said you did i'm sorry i a little behind caught up in no, everything. No, no worries. No worries at all. Um, so I am a child of 90s 
alternative rock. <laughs> Right. And so my my request is Space No More Epic. Yes! I love that song. Also and I'm actually one. right now sending you another donation okay, to add great. to your list. Thank you, you everyone. There. And that's because I want you to play it with your opposite hand. Okay, um, you get that one for free, actually. And I think you already donated and you didn't give me a request. So we're going to just add that one. Why do I not have that song? Hold on. Uh, give me a second. I gotta find it. I don't know why it's not there. Uh, where? Where? Oh, there it is. I thought I had it. Maybe I spelled it wrong or something. Okay, so you want me to play Faith No More Switch Handed? Epic by Faith yeah. No More Switch. Okay. This song I full comboed. It is actually a song that I really, really love playing. And um, it was on the oh, first okay. Rock Band game. And it was one of those songs that I just was one of my favorite songs to play and i i have hit this i have completed this song with zero misses before it's going to be a little bit different playing it uh switch handed but let's do it all right oh wait before we do i got another donation and i want to check that real quick Oh, that's from you. <laughs> that's from me. <laughs> Thank you. You're for the Thank donation. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us and watching him play. I think he's awesome. And um, we are so excited to share, spread the word about ACS Can. So, yes, hit absolutely. it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I might try to sing it, but I might have a hard time with 